Hey guys, Callie here. Welcome back to my channel. I'm super excited to be back finally with a new refashion. Excuse me, Callie. It's not called a refashion anymore. It's called a thrift flip. Get with the times, it's 2019. Okay, sorry. For this thrift flip, I really was inspired by some pins on Pinterest of plaid dresses worn over long sleeve shirt with like tights and booties. I just think it's so cute for fall. I'm loving that plaid is really big right now. I was looking for the perfect plaid. I found this men's blazer that was a triple XL and I just loved the print, the, the plaid in this. It's mostly like different shades of gray, charcoal, some white with a subtle red stripe in it. Funny story about this. When I took it to the checkout stand to purchase it, the worker was this cute little old man. And as I'm like giving it to him, he kept saying, wow, this is such a nice blazer. What a nice coat. Oh my goodness, this is such a beautiful jacket. And I'm sitting there like, mm-hmm. Yeah. So let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, very first thing, I like to remove the buttons, get those out of the way. However, I am not tossing them. I am going to save them and use them for later. When I'm doing refashions, I really like to try to include some of the original elements in my new design. Um, next, I just cut a big square um, from the bottom of the blazer using the bottom as my new hem. Always reuse hems when you can. It saves you so much work. Um, and then I am folding that in half and I'm going to pin the two edges together and I'm going to sew this and this will become the back seam of my skirt. So this will run down the middle of the back of my skirt. Okay, 7,000 pins later, <laughs> I am going ahead and sewing that together. And I am making sure that I am going to the left of those original buttonholes. I don't wanna have a hole in the front or I guess the back of my skirt. Um, after doing this, I decided I wanted a little bit of a slit in the back of my dress, especially since I'm going to make it quite fitted. So I went ahead and unpicked the bottom um, of the back seam that I had just sewn. <laughs> Obviously this would have been quicker if I had planned on this originally, but no worries. I just went ahead and unpicked um, about four inches up. And then after unpicking, I made sure to go in and reinforce um, where my stitching stopped so that it doesn't continue to come apart on its own. Then with my skirt inside out, I pinned those um, edges flat um, and then I went back in and sewed those down and sewed up and around that slit just to reinforce that, keep those flaps down and um, just kind of finish that off. Okay, so this is my skirt inside out. You're looking at the front. I had sewn some side seams in and then just decided, you know what, I'm going to grab a skirt that I like the shape of, trace it, and um, so using that shape, it will just save me some time. So this is something I do often and always recommend grabbing pieces from your closet that have a similar shape you're going for and using it as your pattern. It'll save you tons of time in tailoring and help you just get a much better fit. And after sewing in those new side seams, I went in with my shears and cut off the excess fabric. Next, I was moving on to the top of my dress. So I took the rest of the blazer and just started cutting it up into big chunks. This is one of the pieces for my front. At first, honestly, I just kind of eyeballed the shape. You'll see later I went in and used, again, something from my closet to create a pattern piece. But I'm putting two pieces together with buttons down the front. So I'm finishing that inner edge as well as the top edge just to give me some clean lines. This is that middle seam. I am folding it over about the width that my placket is going to be where I'm going to put the buttons. This is just so that it has a little bit extra stability when I go in with my buttons. Next, I measured one of the buttonholes from the original blazer to get that measurement for my new buttonholes, which I measured and marked on the new garment. Okay, on to the buttonholes. The first step is to remove your regular presser foot and put on your buttonhole presser foot. Next, you change your stitches to this little thing, has a one, 
and change your stitch length to a little less than a one. You're going to start just to the left of that line you drew right at the top and go down. Your machine moves it for you so you really don't have to feed the fabric through. You're going to end on a left stitch and then change it to the second thing that says a two and a four. You're gonna do about six stitches, six stitches back and forth. Again, your machine does this for you, ending on a right stitch, then change it to the three. Then you're going to sew and it will move your um, machine backwards or your fabric backwards. You're sewing the right side of your buttonhole. Keep going all the way up until you get to the top of your buttonhole marking line. And on a right stitch, go back to the two, four, do again about six stitches, ending on the left, then change back to a straight stitch, change the length to a zero, and do a couple stitches to lock it in place. And that is how you do a buttonhole really, really quick. Then cut open your buttonhole. You should use a seam ripper for this, but mine just wasn't sharp enough, so I used scissors, but be very careful not to cut your stitches. Um, and then I added my um, buttons onto the other side of my front garment piece. All right, here's where I got smart and went back in with a piece of clothing to use as a pattern. So this is my two front pieces. I've got them pinned together or I guess buttoned together and I am using a dress with a similar shape to what I want, pinning the top down and I am tracing around it, altering the shape just a tad bit to my liking. Then I am going ahead and cutting that shape out. I just cut one side and then fold it over and cut the other side. And you can see I had not done my buttons at this point, so we're a little out of order, but just go with it. <laughs> then I evened up at the bottom to make it straight. I took another piece of fabric from my blazer and I am now tracing the back piece of the dress to get the back section. And again, um, I am just making sure to try to get that even straight lines um, across both sides. Then I'm going to take that back piece, have it right side up, and I am matching my front piece right sides together with the edges, so the side seams basically. Once I had those sewn, I had my whole top garment. I pinned it to my dress form inside out so I could see the fit. And I am just going straight down from the nipple line, pulling it in at the waist to make some darts to really taper this in and make it fit well. So once I take that off, I'm just redrawing that line based on the pins I put in, pinning it in place, and then I will sew that up. And I'm making sure to do it to both sides, measuring for accuracy, trying to really get these darts in the exact same place on each side and get them the exact same size so that the fit is really, the fit is just really good and even. All right, time to put the top and bottom of the dress together. So I have my skirt laid down right side up and I am putting the top piece um, right sides together, so facing down on top of my skirt. And I'm just matching that up in the middle and I'm going to overlap um, the placket, obviously, um, on top of each other. And I'm going to pin that all the way around. If you were paying attention as I was pinning, yes, I did have the placket in the wrong order. I did go back in and fix that before sewing it all together, don't worry. <laughs> and I lied, I did not sew all the way around. I left the very back center seam unsewn. And this is because I'm adding a zipper. So I'm actually unpicking the top of the skirt um, just a little bit further down to insert my zipper um, and give enough room for me to actually get into the dress. <laughs> I am so sad these clips are out of focus, but hopefully you get the idea anyways. I am folding over that um, open seam in the back to give nice clean lines and I am going to place my zipper inside of that opening. So I'm starting at the top, putting the zipper right at the top of those, um, pinning those together, and then I'm just going to put the fabric onto my zipper. You wanna make sure you're getting your fabric really even, no puckering, make sure it's laying nice and flat. Some people like to pin their zipper um, to their dress or their clothing piece with the zipper unzipped. I like doing it with it zipped closed. And then when I have it all pinned in place, I just fold my fabric like this, which makes all the pins pop straight up. And it allows me to unzip my zipper, but everything's totally aligned perfectly. 
I think it's a great trick. And after that's all pinned in place, ready to go, I take it to the sewing machine and sew down around the zipper, pivoting at the bottom, turning and coming back up the other side. And once you've got that done, you can trim the excess off the bottom of the zipper and off the top. Next, last step for my dress is to make some straps. So I am cutting, um, I believe I cut three inch wide strips. Just with the method I'm using, you whatever your finished width you want your strap to be, just multiply that by four when you're cutting your strips. That's the width you want. Once I had my strips, I folded them in half, ironed them, then I will unfold that and fold each side into the middle and iron that and then close it back up. And that gives me a nice crisp finished edges strip. And I just take that to the sewing machine and top stitch that down all the way. And once I had my two straps, I just placed them onto my dress where I wanted them and tacked those down. And that completed my dress. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I love how this dress turned out. I will say with this dress, I redid several elements multiple times. Luckily I had enough fabric to play with. It's a learning process. Like I've said a million times, I am not a seamstress. I have never taken a single sewing class. So I really just make it up as I go and do a lot of trial and error. Be sure to hit subscribe before you leave if you wanna see more thrift flips, thrift hauls, DIYs, all that kind of good stuff. Thanks for being here and I will see you guys again soon. Bye. Okie dokie. Okay, and here's a random shout out to all your parents out there who have, or who are now, or who will potty train a child at some point because we've been doing that this week with our toddler and it is a job. All throughout my life, I never imagined I would be this invested in somebody else's poop. You sit here and I'll focus on you. <laughs> here comes my husband. Ready? Three, two, one. What's up, boo? Are you recording? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, okay, so for this refashion, I mean thrift flip, I'm gonna have to correct myself so many times on this to switch over to saying thrift flip. Thrift flip, thrift flip, thrift flip, thrift flip.